Last week in the semifinals in the Division I AA playoffs, defensive back Joe Roberts of Montana State returned an interception 97 yards to spark the Bobcats to an exciting come-from-behind win over Rhode Island, 32-20. And at Murfreesboro, Tennessee, in the game between Louisiana Tech and Middle Tennessee, David Green sealed the victory with this 80-yard touchdown run. Louisiana Tech beat Middle Tennessee State 21-13 to move into the championship game today. And it's a perfect day for football. The temperature is 70 degrees. It's sunny. And we have an ideal setting at the Johnson Haygood Stadium on the campus of the Citadel. A participating advertiser is too bad, and they will determine who is number one today. Quite frankly, before the season got underway, the experts didn't give either team much of a chance for being here. Louisiana Tech was picked no better than fourth in the Southland Conference. All the Bulldogs did was to win the conference championship and sail through three playoff games to get here. And the Bobcats from Montana State, well, they were 1-10 in 10 a year ago, and they were picked to finish dead last in the Big Sky Conference. They won the conference championship and defeated Arkansas State and Rhode Island to get here. So that sort of sets the stage, and let's call in our expert analyst, Steve Davis, former great quarterback at the University of Oklahoma. And Steve, I guess the best place to begin with you as a former quarterback is with the quarterback. Well, I think any time that uh, you get excellent uh, execution out of your quarterbacks and you're running your offense, that makes a difference in your ball game. And I think we've got two outstanding quarterbacks. Montana State has a young man, man by the name of Kelly Bradley. He's a redshirt sophomore, thrown for over 4,100 yards, 36 <laughs> touchdowns, a 57% passer, and he really has a tremendous knowledge of the game, Bill. He does everything right. You rarely see him uh, rattle on the field, and if he's able to execute, I think he'll deal out all the misery that uh, Louisiana Tech can really deal with today. And, of course, we saw Gandy last week. Kyle Gandy is the young man that uh, his turnaround physically, he's been injured his entire career. In the last four games, he's been well. He's played uh, very uh, uh, smart football. He's been the difference maker for Louisiana Tech. He doesn't get rattled. He does the right things on the field. And I think the key today are the two quarterbacks and how they're able to perform. I think the other key is the heat. Montana State is a football team that had to plow back the snow on Wednesday to practice before they came out to lovely Charleston. And I think the key today is how they're able to keep their offense and defense reasonably rested. With a 52-man roster, that could be tough. Well, we've talked about two of the players, but now it's time to meet all of the players. And to do that, we start off with A.L. Williams, the coach of Louisiana Tech. I'm A.L. Williams, head coach of the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. We're here today because of a strong commitment by a great group of young men. I'd like to have you meet them. Number 26, Mike Stern, split in, the Shreveport, Louisiana. Number 8, Todd Bresky, is split in from Watertown, South Dakota. Number 75, Milton Rota, left tackle, Jackson State. Number 72, Ken Hedison, left guard, and Lenny Tech. Number 57, Mike Slim, Bozier City, Louisiana, center. Number 59, Clayton Shoemaker, right guard, Nacogdoche, Texas. Number 79, Craig Watts, offensive tackle, Las Vegas, and Rattles. Number 41, Gerald McDaniel, from the tight end from Lake Charles, Louisiana. 8 to 7, Lester Mill, tight end, Winfield, Louisiana. Number 17, Kyle Gandy, quarterback from Angleton, Texas. David Brewer, quarterback from Fort Louisiana. Number 22, David Green, running back from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Number 32, Rollin Powell, running back from Winfield, Louisiana. Number 30, Bobby Light, running back from New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 34, Paul Terrebonne, wide receiver, last year, Louisiana. Number 31, George Vignola, kicker, Allen, Texas. Number 88, Wendy Abilene, defensive end, New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 73, Don Washington, defensive top, Shreveport, Louisiana. Number 66, Don Lamar, Nose Dog, Shreveport, Louisiana. Number 53, Steve McCourt, defensive tackle, first time in Georgia. Number 61, Walter Duff, I say defensive end, prepared to lose out. 51, Douglas Tang Land, Lineback, New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 46, Neil Ashton, I say linebacker, I say Sicily Island, Louisiana. Number 36, John Paul Rocky, I say linebacker, and I'm from Louis, Louisiana. Number 24, Harry Jackson, right cornerback, Orange Tech. Number 49, Greg Powell, left cornerback, Winfield, Louisiana. Number 45, number 23, no, no, Mississippi, play cornerback. 
Number 13, Doyle Adams, free safety, Bent, Louisiana. Number 35, Alden Kelly, strong safety, Freeport, Louisiana. Number 39, my name is Barry Hamilton. I play strong safety. I'm from Ruston, Louisiana. Number 7, Barry Bowman. I'm a punter from Long Beach, Texas. Hi, I'm Dave Vinyl, head football coach of Montana State University. It's a pleasure for us to represent the Big Sky. I'd like to introduce our football team now. Number two, Tommy White, wide receiver, Riverton, Wyoming. Number 44, Darren Dietrich, wide receiver, Sunnyside, Washington. Number 66, Bill Schmidt, right tackle, third Montana. Number 73, Bruce Randall, right guard, Miles City, Montana. 55, Rod Fellow, center, Great Falls, Montana. Number 60, left guard, Todd Basie, Minden, Nevada. Number 74, Don Leak, left tackle, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Number 86, Joe Bigno, tight end, Deer Lodge, Montana. Tom Mellon, number 24, tight end, Missoula, Montana. Brent Babin, number 89, Shuttle, Montana, wide receiver. Number 18, Kelly Davis, wide receiver, Butte, Montana. Number 4, Tim Clement, Powell, Michigan, running back. Number 33, David Pant, running back, Monroe, Michigan. Jesse Jones, number 39, fullback, Tacoma, Washington. Number 12, Kelly Bradley, quarterback from Rota, Minnesota. Number one, Mark Carter, kicker from Mississauga, Washington. Number 68, Marcelo, defensive end, Shota, Montana. Number 71, Troy Timmer, defensive tackle, Boulder, Montana. Number 59, Lonnie Burt, nose dirt, Helen, Montana. 91, Texas Cora, defensive end, Brian, Montana. Number 27, Fleet Linebarker, outside linebacker, Conrad, Montana. Number 42, Kirk Timmer, inside linebacker, Boulder, Montana. 99, Greg Wilkes, inside linebacker, Riverside, California. Number 17, Derek Abel, defensive back, Inglewood, California. 43, William Johnson, cornerback, Los Angeles, California. Number 29, Doug Kimball, free safety, Chester, Montana. Number 47, Joe Roberts, strong safety, Missoula, Montana. Number 35, Rodney Hollis, cornerback, Longview, Washington. Number three, Dirk Nelson, punter, from Derby, Kansas. So those are the men you'll be seeing here today. And now at the center of the field meeting with the officials are the captains for today's game. Meeting with Courtney Mosey, the referee. Let's hear his instructions. And your officials today are from the Atlantic Coast Conference. We're proud to be a part of a national championship. We're going to call you the blue team, you the white team, you're the boosters. I got a coin, it's got a head and a tails on it. Called in the air. If I drop it, I'm gonna flip it again, okay? Heads he calls, heads he calls, heads it is. You win the choice and you get to keep the coin. You can kick or receive or defend either goal or wait to the second half. You're gonna defer. You're gonna defer. Defer, defer, defer to the second half. Our white team wins the toss. We'll defer to the second half. Now you have your choice to kick, receive, or defend the goal. You want to receive, which end will you kick from? Defend this goal. You turn your back this way, please. Blue team, we'll receive. Take hands, man. Have a good game. So, Mark Fellows, Joe Roberts, and Joe Bignall, the strike captains of Montana State, have chosen to receive the football, as you heard, Alden Kelly and Kirk. That will cost Tech an additional 10 yards and give the Montana State Bobcats an opportunity to take it at the 30-yard line. So let's set the offensive line up here with Kelly Bradley, number 12, the quarterback, the running back, number four, Tim Clements, the fullback, Jesse Jones, number 39, and the flanker, Brent Bateman, number 89. We have Bignall and White at the end. Those are the remaining officials here today. We introduce Courtney Mousey, Ernest Cage, Richard Tyndall, A.C. Rhodes, Ernest Benson, and Robert Cuff. First and ten on the 30 for the Bobcats, dressed in their yellow and blue outfits today. Great handoff, doesn't get much. Jesse Jones, the fullback, is dragged down by Doug Tank Landry, All-America linebacker on the right side for Louisiana Tech. Let's get a word with uh, Steve Davis about uh, the beginning strategy in this game for the Bobcats. Well, I think 
first of all, you've got to realize that Kelly Bradley's going to throw the football most of the day. They're just trying to, on the first play, make the adjustments of what the defense is going to throw at them early in the ball game. He'll go right to the air probably uh, on this play. You're right. And Bradley spots his man over the middle, but it's much too high for the intended receiver, Kelly Davis, who is Joe Bigman. So, that brings up a third down. Kelly Bradley's a phenomenal quarterback. There you see his statistics on the year. He rarely gets rattled, as I said at the top of the show. He's just the cool, calm, collected young man on the field, has a tremendous presence of what's going on. Louisiana Tech is going to try to keep him off balance a little bit, disguise coverages, make it a little bit tougher for him to make the read that he is so good at doing. Third and ten. And here comes the blitz, and he gets the ball away, and a dangerous floater is incomplete. Thought it was picked off for a moment. Royal Adams, number 13, leaps high in the air. We thought he might have had the ball. It was intended for, intended for Joe Bignall, number 86. So it goes as an incompleted pass, and uh, that was a very dangerous one, by the way. The big blitz was on, and uh, he was lucky to get away. Fourth down. All-America punter Dirk Nelson, and boy, he just did get that away. Everybody in on top of him, and the ball will take a fortunate bounce toward the field. It looked like it was going to go out of bounds. I say fortunate for Montana State. It'll roll dead somewhere around the 23-yard line. What a rush was put on. I, I'm amazed that Nelson was able to get his foot on the ball. Seems like a Louisiana Tech's taking the strategy. We're just going to pressure everything, pressure the quarterback, the punter. They come up, Bill, in a no offense, uh, no huddle set. Try to keep Montana State off balance defensively. All right, Gandy Green, lights and terrible. And Gandy gets a big rush, and he is beheaded. Troy Timmer, number 71, nailed him for a 10-yard sack. Montana State likes to really pressure you by a stunt package. They really throw a lot of different things at you. That time, Louisiana Tech goes without a huddle trying to get uh, Montana State more balanced to hurry up the scheme where they can't make calls on stunt to put pressure on Louisiana Tech. Second and 18, and Bobby Lights is stopped after a gain of only about a yard by Lonnie Burt, the middle guard. Where's number 59? So it's third and about 17 as Kyle Gandy, the senior from Angleton, Texas, goes back to the five. Nice move. And finally gets rid of the ball and he shouldn't have. It's intercepted by Derek Abel of Montana State at the 29-yard line. It was intended for Carl Terrebone. Gandy, in that situation, Steve, probably should have eaten. He gets forced out of the pocket. He does an excellent job of getting away from would-be tacklers, but then he makes a critical mistake trying to force the football. He should have just probably gone to the turf. He was throwing against the front of his body. It was an off-balance, throwing off the wrong foot. It's very difficult to throw a good, solid, trajectory-type pass. He did not do it. Abel was able to make, Abel was able to make the interception. So it gives the Bobcats the first real break in this national championship game. They will take the ball just inside the 30-yard line, where it'll be first and 10. They take a time out here to talk to Dave Arnold, their head coach. As I mentioned, it just couldn't be a better day for football. The temperature will hit somewhere around 75 degrees this afternoon. And we have a scoreless first quarter. Are just inside the 30, 30 yards away from a score. First down and 10. Bradley, a lot of time, throws a long one deep, and it's out of bounds. Intended for Brent Bateman, who had come in motion and was streaking down the sideline. I'm impressed with the amount of time that Bradley had to throw, aren't you, Steve? If you're looking at Louisiana Tech on defense, Bill, they're doing a lot of moving around. Linebackers are coming in the, the gaps, and then they're backing out. What they're trying to do is do anything to confuse Kelly Bradley, the quarterback, make it appear that it's going to be a blitz. 
maybe Bradley thinks he's got man coverage, and that way he knows he's got individual coverage. And try to keep him confused. Second down on the 30. Bradley again, and a, once more, a long, high, lofted pass intended for Kelly Davis is much too high for him. What's causing that is that the linebackers, as I said, they're coming in the gaps. It looks like they're going to blitz. So when you blitz defensively, you go into a man coverage. And so Kelly Bradley is thinking that he's got a man wide open one-on-one, -on -one, so he lost the ball up, but it's zone coverage. And so they're doing a good job, Louisiana Tech, of confusing him a little bit early in the ball game. So he's made some mistakes throwing that lofted pass against his own defense when he was thinking it's going to be man. Could he have gotten it to him and put a little zip on it? Probably not. And a big rush goes on, and this one's perfect. Right into the arms of Jesse Jones. Out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Harry Jackson ran him out. That time, they go man. They blitz him. They go man. He's got single coverage on Jesse Jones, his fullback. This is what makes the play. You see the blitz right there. Everybody all over Bradley, the quarterback. Then you've got a running back that's wide open. And so Jones has pushed out of bounds. But that time, Bill, it worked because he had the right coverage. He knew the right play where to go with the football. First and goal to goal. The ball on the eight-yard line. And that racket you hear, all the Montana State fans seated right down below. Pass in the end zone right off the fingertips of Darren Dietrich. He almost had a touchdown. Harry Jackson covering number 24 one thing we have seen Steve is that Kelly Bradley is a versatile thrower he has a lot of zip on it and he can throw that high lofted pass. Right, he can do a lot of different things that's why he's thrown for over 4,100 yards his sophomore year second and eight from the eight Bradley this one's too high intended for Joe Bignall the tight end one of the things that the offensive coaches uh, told me last night, they really feel like that this young man, Kelly Bradley, has got to be patient. The key to a passing attack is not try to get it all so quickly. Just take your time, be patient, find the seams in that, that defensive uh, secondary. There may be thin seams, but just wait and be patient. They're going to try to exploit the safety today. Put a lot of pressure on Adams and Kelly, the two safeties of Louisiana Tech. Throw to set up their offense. Third, no, excuse me, third and goal to go. No score, first quarter. Big handoff, and Bradley looks, and he is smothered. Number 61, Walter Johnson, the right defensive end, came through, and down goes Bradley at the 17-yard line. A great defensive play by this sophomore from Faraday, Louisiana. I was so impressed with Johnson we saw last week against Middle Tennessee State. He really is an exceptional player. Number 61, and he's explosive. He does all the right things. But give Kelly Bradley a lot of credit. He stays in the pocket, looking at the field, giving his receivers the last chance to make a play. Mark Carter puts it up, and it is good. And so that field goal from 26 yards out, unofficially, gives the Bobcats the lead with 11.59 to go in the first quarter. A three to nothing lead over Louisiana Tech for the national championship. So the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech, who won the national championship in 1973 in a game against Western Kentucky, 34 to nothing, against the Bobcats of Montana State, who defeated Akron 24 to 13 in 1976 for the national title. Both vying for the crown here at 84. Clifford Jackson is in the center. Garland Powell on the far side, and David Green on the near side is Mark Carter. Boots it, a short kick, and it is taken by David Green. He ran 80 yards for a TD last week, but he is smothered at the 15-yard line by the Bobcat defense. And that's where Al Gandy will rally his forces for the Bulldogs. And this time, I notice, Steve, they do take the hub. I think that that's probably a wise thing to do. They can do, accomplish the same thing by being able to throw short routes and to uh, use delays and draw plays to keep that defense kind of honest. And that's what the main purpose of the uh, no huddle set was. Lights and David Green are uh, the split backs. Here's David Green. Can't find a hole. Number 59 comes through. Lonnie Burt, the middle guard, clicks his heels together and pulls him down for a loss. That defense is extremely quick. 
the stats on David Green. The, re the real key of Montana State's defense will, today, I believe, will be the cornerback, Holland, number 35, and Abel, number 17, and then the two outside linebackers, Fellows and Linebarger, because they'll be able to turn that sweet play inside and force it back into where all the, the bodies are for Montana State. Second and 12, and once again, there goes Troy Timmer, and down goes the quarterback as Mark Fellows combines with Timmer to bring him down. Fellows wears number 68, and Timmer 71. Let's see where the protection breaks down. This is the key to the ball game also, is the protect. There it is, Timmer 71. Nobody touches Timmer. The 6'4", 245-pound senior was untouched on the left side, or the right side defensively, left side offensively. Roder and Hetherington did not keep him out, and so he was able to have a clear shot at Kyle Gandy, the quarterback. I guess the Bulldogs are wondering, what do we have to do? Talk about a fired up defense. They're really clawing bobcats out there right now on the delay that's what they decided to do try to slow things down a little bit and david green fights for every inch as he gets the ball just up to about the five yard line he never worked harder in his life for three yards and listen to this crowd and look look at those blue and yellow banners right down below us here on the press box side of johnson haygood stadium all bobcat rooters can't miss it Walk down. Doug Kimball is back as the kick returner, and Barry Bowman has it partially blocked. The ball continues on and is taken by Kimball. 40 yard line. I thought I heard a, a hand slap that ball, Steve. I think so, Bill. I think it was partially blocked. Let's see if we can see what happens. I believe it was partially blocked also. There's the punter. See who it is. Yep. Uh -huh. so it looks like his right hand, I couldn't tell who it was, his right hand was able to get just enough of the football to take away the spin and the, the uh, long yardage of the punt. William Johnson gets credit for it, number 43. With that single back, the ball is taken by Eric Miller, and he gets a couple of yards before Donald Myers brings him down. Miller is a junior out of Auburn, Washington. This telecast is presented by the authority of the NCAA, and any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Production. Nine minutes, 24 seconds to go in this first quarter. Second down. Not eight. Bradley. Ooh, right off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Joe Bignall. Coach Williams finds his team behind here, three to nothing, talking things over with one of his assistants. I can't tell if that's Jerry Arledge or not, the defensive coordinator probably is. Billy Laird is up on the phones upstairs, the offensive coordinator. Third down. Oh, what a blitz goes in on that one. And once again, number 51, Tank Landry, is a man whose name we've had to call it many a time during the playoffs. This is perfect timing on a linebacker. Watch him right there. Perfect timing on the snap. No one's able to really make the block on him. Clements, the running back, tried to. Doug Landry made 135 tackles during the regular season. Kodak All-American football player stops uh, the quarterback. So on fourth down, Dirk Nelson, an All-America punter, has a low snap and again gets it away. First time it was a major miracle to get it out of the hands of the Bulldogs. This time he had a little more time in a roll out of bounds somewhere around the 15-yard line. So we have eight minutes and 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. And the Bobcats of Montana State are hanging on to a three-to-nothing lead over Louisiana Tech for the national title. Now the question is, Steve Davis, how can the Bulldogs solve this defense of Montana State? We'll see what the strategy is. Candy, with a little more action now, gets up the field to the 21-yard line, and he gets about five before Troy Timmer, number 71. Buttons him down at number 59, Lonnie Burt. 
Well, I guess we had the uh, the answer. Roll out and run. Anything to try to freeze the defense, put more pressure on them. That's what Kyle Gandy feels like he's got to do. This time to try to sprint out, get away from all their speed and their where they target inside on him. And uh, he made a significant game. Gandy, a quick cross, incomplete. It's in for Gerald McDaniel, number 41. Joe Roberts, the hero of last week's game, number 47, was covering on the play. Kyle Gandy, by the way, you're looking at right now, became a father on Monday. If you'll recall, if you were with us on the telecast last week, his wife Tamara was expecting and had been for, I don't know, two or three weeks, and he was just waiting for the phone to ring, and on pins and needles, well, he delivered a baby boy on last Monday. So the suspense is over, at least. Well, that one just out of the grasp of the intended receiver, Gerald McDaniel. And that'll bring up a fourth down. So the Bulldogs have had a little bit of a hard time generating any offense here. Harry Bowman, a 38.7 average punter, will come in, and Doug Kimball drops back for Montana State. Joe Roberts. Now I want to see who comes up with the football. 43, number 43 was the player who boxed it. That would be William Johnson. I thought it was Robert 47 that blocked it. Let's see who did it. I, I thought it was Robert 47, the strong safety from outside. Let's see who it is. Right. There he was. There he was. was it William Johnson? William Johnson. We'll right. give William Johnson the block. Okay. Bradley in traffic closes. Incomplete. Good defensive play. Stop that ball from being completed. John Paul Locke banged into Jesse Jones, number 36. I'll tell you, if nothing else, this Louisiana Tech uh, team is going to be fired up defensively. This is, a, this is a contact sport. <laughs> John Paul Locke makes a tackle that, uh, or at least knocks the, the ball away from the intended receiver. <laughs> Bradley has that ball spanked by an interior lineman, number 73, Donald Washington, and it falls harmlessly to the ground. Washington's not all that big. He's 6'2". Kelly Bradley, this time he just throws the ball a little bit low, and Donald Washington has one hand out the right spot and, and able to knock the ball down. He's a sophomore from Shreveport. Third down. Well, if the Bulldogs can hold here after getting a blocked kick, they do a wonder for, uh oh, somebody moved. And again, we don't know whether it was an offensive lineman who may have triggered that. They're checking with the linesman. No, nope, it's against Louisiana Tech. Myers and Washington. Three to nothing ball game. Montana State out in front. Defensively, Louisiana Tech is doing something right. Kelly Bradley, the quarterback, has only completed one pass in ten attempts. So they're putting the right kind of pressure and disguising the defense well enough that he's struggling a little bit early in the game. He got this one away and completed to Joe Bignall, and he's down on the 17-yard line. John Paul Lucky making the stop. It's a first down. Bignall is. The senior from Deer Lodge, Montana. Joe Bignall, the tight end, number 86, is really the heart and guts of uh, the offense for Montana State. Everything kind of revolves around him. He's caught 78 passes coming into today's game. And he's the key, and they'll do a lot of things to challenge those linebackers to keep the secondary honest by being able to use Joe on those intermediate routes. First down on the 17. Oh, look at that line. that's forming a fort in front of Bradley. He throws it in the end zone. 
touchdown. Joe Bingo was all alone near the end line. Watch Bingo. Now he'll go into the end zone. The secondary people will lose where he is. They will forget that Bickle's running around all this time. Kelly's got plenty of time to throw the ball, gets behind the secondary coverage, walks away from the defender, and is wide open. And Kelly Bradley finds him. Joe Bickle's had four touchdowns the season, and the touchdowns, many of them, have been just like that play where he just walks away from the coverage. Mark Carter to try the extra point. He's made 32 out of 36 so far, but this one slides off to the left side. He shanked it. And that one will kind of detract a bit from his effort. So Montana State has upped its lead to 19 to nothing by virtue of that blocked kick. By nine to nothing. By virtue of that blocked kick. Interesting sideline to this game today, Dr. Jay Taylor, the Let's, see. Get into that Let's see what happens. The snap was okay. The ball was handled. He kept his feet down. Did not follow through to the degree. It looks like everything appeared to be correct. Followed through on this kick, but it did not go through the upright. So, yeah, uh, Williams, the coach of Louisiana Tech, says, well, we've been behind before. We can do it. Mark Carter will do the booting. Clifford Jackson, David Green, Ron Powell back. Another hard to handle kick. Bounces and it's picked up by Lifford Jackson. Number 40, look out, he's quick. Gets this all the way up to the 40 yard line. That's the best field position that the Bulldogs have had. 30 yard line, rather. Gets the best field position they've had. And they'll go to work now, trailing 9 to nothing. Well, that 16 yard pass only. Uh, in that particular drive, only took 41 seconds to go to 31 yards after the block kick. And William Johnson should be given partial credit for that six point. The man who blocked it. David Green. Good defensive play. Tex Sikora, a tackle on the right side, seeped in behind and had great pursuit. Tex Sikora is not all that big, 6'2 and a half, 225. He's going to be working on uh, Hetherington, 72. He gets away from him. He's shifted outside. Also, he was working on Milt Roeder, number 75, and was able to get away from this blocker and then make the play. Second and 12, lost two. Andy, for the first time, has some protection, but can't find anybody open. The defensive secondary had everybody covered, and Sikora... Gets credit for the sack. Texas Four has got the outside responsibility. Comes right upfield. He's working on Rotor again, 75. And he's off the block there also of David Green, 22. There's Rotor working on him. And he'll just shift away. Gandy works right into his clutches. And he makes the play. Two straight great plays in a row. that every time that Louisiana Tech gets it, they have long yardage here. That one is picked off. It was intended for Mike, uh, Michael Sherman and Doug Kimball grabs the ball at the 39-yard line. Trying to make the play across the middle. Kimball, the free safety, 29, is just playing kind of center field. The ball is thrown too far ahead of the intended receiver, and Doug Kimball's able to make, pull it off. That's the third turnover for Louisiana Tech. Block punt, two interceptions. And again, gives uh, Montana State great field position. Ball on the 39-yard line. Bradley on the sweep, and there is a terrific defensive play by the middle guard. Or was it Johnson? Oh, it was number 51, wasn't it? Looks like Tank Landry, 51. 
will come from his linebacker position, and it just seems like nobody's able to pull him out of the play and keep him distracted, and that's the key. Everything Louisiana Tech does to try to concentrate on making their linebackers and outside linebackers make the play, and Landry made the big play on that particular uh, escape. Second and 17. Right in the slot. Perfectly thrown to number 44, Darren Dietrich. Doyle Adams made the stop, but it's a first down on the 24-yard line. One of the things you try to do is to keep those linebackers reasonably honest. Landry made the big play earlier. Now, this time, you want to see what kind of pass protection your linebackers are able to make, and they come right behind the linebackers. Where are the linebackers? Dietrich's able to make the play across the middle. First down on the 24. But they pull them, they go in the opposite direction. Eric Miller, the fullback. And Landry makes the stop on the play with John Paul Lockie. Well, the one thing that Louisiana Tech does not want to see up there is seven points. They might be able to live with three, but at this point in the ballgame, trailing nine to nothing in the first quarter would be a devastating blow to be behind by 16. <laughs> by Louisiana Tech's Alden Kelly, one of the co-captains for today's game. Tank Landry came shooting through there. You saw him. And Bradley had to hurry it. And then on the deflection, Kelly got it. They're trying to get a big goal across the middle. Both linebackers are blitzing, forcing Bradley to throw it much quicker than he wants to. Alden Kelly makes his seventh interception of the season. Unbelievable one-handed grab to make the catch. Finally, a good turnover for Louisiana Tech. Couldn't have come at a better time for the Bulldogs. Trailing nine to nothing. David Green tries to wiggle through, but doesn't get much. Gets it up to about the 24-yard line. David Green is an explosive little guy. 5'5", 187 pounds from Alexandria, Louisiana. They're just trying to freeze the linebackers to isolate, make Montana State play more conservative on defense, more honest. They're trying to mix up their offense to get that kind of look for their uh, offense. Good hole this time opens up for David Green, and he rips through it for a first down. And there's a marker down on the field. I think that's only the second penalty we had. We had one procedure penalty in this one. Kirk Timmer makes the stop. Well, David Green was a big hero last week against Middle Tennessee with that 80-yard explosion in the fourth quarter that sealed the game. But this is going to go against Louisiana Tech in a big way. Back to the 13-yard line. Clip, wow, 15 big ones. So A.L. Williams, the personable coach of Louisiana Tech, in his second year, kind of scratching his head there, saying, well, we've got to do something here to break this defense. 2.42 to go, first quarter, and Tech trailing by nine. And he retreats and throws the screen to David Green. Good block out front, and he slips and falls at the 22-yard line. Number 72, Ken Hetherington, put a real sound block on the defender. But when you've got an aggressive, pursuing style of defense, you try to take advantage, keep them off tempo, throw the screen play, the delays, things across the middle. This time, David Green gets a little screen play out to the left and slips down. But at least they're trying to get that off defense a little bit more off balance. Try to make them not be able to do so many things to them offensively. Third down. And a marker once again thrown by the linesman. So it's going to be a procedure penalty against someone. Gandy on the uh, carry. Motion against Louisiana Tech. Oh, the dogs just can't seem to get things together. 
Looked like an exchange problem yeah. there by Mike Clemp to the quarterback, Kyle Gandy, and Gandy had to pick it up and do the best he could with it. So Barry Bowman goes in to do the punting. Doug Kimball drops back as a single safety. And once again, here they come. Oh, he gets a good kick away. High kick, good coverage down there on the fair catch at the 30-yard line. So the Bobcats, leading in this ball game by the score of 9 0, will take over with 1.41 to go in this first quarter. Well, I'll tell you something, that Landry is really quick. Landry this time, number 51, the linebacker, jumps up when he probably should have continued on and tried to put, keep pressure on the quarterback, not lose his feet, because when he jumps up, then the quarterback's able to maneuver and complete the pass. Keep your feet when you're a linebacker. Keep in the face of that quarterback. Second and nine. White across the middle, but they can't get the ball to it. And Washington and Delaney make the stop. You're impressed with what Donald Washington and Wendell Delaney both do as far as the defense, but you've got to be impressed, too, at the quarterback, Kelly Bradley, to be able to stand in there knowing that he's got a 232-pounder and a 210-pounder coming barreling at you to have the poise and confidence to sit up there and wait for those receivers to break open. Good play by Washington and Delaney. And you can bet they'll be coming again with third and 18. And there goes Landry, but they blocked him off. Just a quick little pass over the center to Bignall. And he's dropped down. There's Dave Arnold, the head coach of Montana State, seeing his team out in front with 17 seconds to go in this first quarter. Nine to nothing is the score. Dave Arnold, who at one time coached Alma, Michigan, and then at Michigan State under Muddy Waters. And the clock runs out at the end of the first quarter. When we return, it'll be fourth and 12 for the Bobcats. And they are leading in this ball game by the score of nine to nothing. And we'll be right back after this message. And there are the bandsmen from Navy Charleston in this uh, Navy town, so to speak. We're pleased to uh, meet the Commodore. Donald Primo, the commander of the Naval Base Charleston last night at the reception held by General Grimsley and his wife on the campus at the Citadel. Here's the fourth down kick by All-America kicker Dirk Nelson. He sends Jackson way back. Good coverage, puts the ball down somewhere around the 20-yard line. 43 yards. So Louisiana Tech will, again, try to generate an offense. Here's Gandy, back to pass. Throws the screen, and it is almost picked off. Number 91, Tex Sakura, might have gone all the way. Flex Tex Sakura, number 91. Big defensive lineman. They don't get this opportunity that often. The ball hits him right where it's got to in the hands. Nobody was behind him. He had. 10 yards to go for the touchdown. He had too much tape on his hands. He's, he's all ready to play defense, not catch the ball. He's not a receiver. <laughs> wow, that was close. On the delay, handoff given to Jerry Jones. So after a gain of about five, putting the ball on the 25-yard line, it brings up that critical third down situation once again for the Bulldogs. Now the signal's being given there by, I believe it's Jerry Arledge. Tech 
is still working to get its first first down. Can you believe that? Third and five. And there it is. Lester Mill gets it up to the 34-yard line. And Kirk Kimmer brings him down. In a ball game like this, when you've got a defense that's really playing well and you're struggling offensively and you're getting poor, poor field position, you've just got to be patient. The ball game's early. They throw the ball across the middle left for Mills. The linebackers are split outside, and they're able to get their first and ten. But you've got to be patient if you're offense. You can't get discouraged, and I don't think Louisiana Tech is discouraged at all yet. Well, they waited 16 minutes for that first first down, and now Jerry Jones rips off tackle for another quick six or seven. And Linebarger brings him down. You just got to be patient in everything that you do. He gets a good block, but I think what made the play there, Jerry Jones is able to see that the block was outside, the hole was outside, and he made the turn right at the line of scrimmage and jumps up field for another five-yard gain. through there is Garland Powell, a hard-running freshman out of Winfield, Louisiana. And he gets another first down at the 46-yard line. I think Louisiana Tech's doing something they didn't feel like, at least the offensive coach is going in the ball game that they would do, is just hammer away at Montana State. Make them play honest football right up the line of scrimmage. Make them uh, battle your offensive line and just go man for man and go hammer away at them and they're being successful. Andy over the center. He's got Terrible. Another first down at the 42-yard line of Montana State, and that is the first time that the Bulldogs have been in enemy territory today. See, you run two plays, running plays right at them. Now you make those linebackers concentrate on something else. They're, they've got to be worried about what's inside, then all of a sudden you hit the little inside route to Terrebonne, and it's another first and ten. So now the play selection is coming into play of the ball game. They're mixing it up, putting pressure on the linebackers and defensive people that have got to worry about run and pass. Troy Timmer, number 71, makes the stop. All these folks from Montana come a long way from Bozeman and, uh, and Byron's. I knew the great ball and all those places out there. I think they were all on the ninth floor last night. <laughs> Every one of them. I heard them all night long. <laughs> Second down, nine. Gandy stops and throws, and he's got a perfect target in. Lee Bailey. First down on the 29 or 30-yard line. Texacora has made some key plays early in the ballgame. There he is, number 91. He'll get the quarterback, but it'll be too late on Kyle Gandy as Gandy's throwing the ball. See, that's the kind of... That's what it takes as a quarterback. Kyle Gandy stays in the pocket. He knows he's going to get hit, but he throws the pass to Bailey. Good for the first and ten. It's not always fun being the quarterback, Bill. I, not, not after I've seen the, some of the action in today's game. Jerry Jones gets a couple down to the 27-yard line. In case you just joined us, this game is for the national championship in Division I AA. Coming to you from Charleston, South Carolina, on the campus of the Citadel. Between two teams that have fought their way in through 87 teams now in this uh, Division One AA, these two have emerged out of all of those this season to fight for the national crown. And right now, Montana State leads 9 0. But Louisiana Tech's on the move. The deepest they have been in Bobcat territory at the 27th. Second down. And he's fumbled the ball. Linebarger came roaring in there, and the ball is recovered by the Bobcats of Montana State. And number 68 is the one who got it, Mark Fellows. They were in rather peculiar offensive set. There comes Linebarger, number 27, and no one had outside, no one turned out, and he was able to get a clean shot on the quarterback and make the play on Kyle Gandy. Mark Fellows is a 225-pound senior from Chateau, uh, Montana. 
And uh, it was a first team All American selection. You kind of pronounce that not like I did it. It's shuttle like. Not really any action, uh, action on it. Out of bounds goes the receiver, Brent Bateman. At the 47. This is where Kelly Bradley really proves his ability as a quarterback. He does, he's got his receiver wide open, so he just throws the ball right where it has to go, right at the out of bounds area. Bateman's able to make the catch and turn up field and make a little bit of additional yards. 10.07 to go in the first half. Kelly Davis is in motion. And Bradley throws to him, but it is off his left hand too high. And will bring the ball back. What is that, the fourth turnover that uh, Louisiana Tech has had, Steve? Let's see, one. Count them up the here. Two interceptions, the block kick, and the fumble. Yep. Boy. Pretty tough to overcome that. And the field position has been horrible, too. Yeah. Second down, ball on the 47. Bobcats out in front. Nine to nothing in the first half. And a quick little pass is right into the arms of Big Bull. Alden Kelly brings him down. Here's the perfect picture of what happens. The linebackers will blitz. Now you've got man coverage on your tight end. Throws it real quick. That forces the safeties, Adams and Kelly, to come up on that tight end quicker because he's, you're in man coverage. And so when you blitz, what you trade off by blitzing is you've got a man coverage and your tight ends open a little bit more than he would be in a normal uh, zone situation. Third and two. Oh, Kelly has got more heat in there on him, and I don't know how he gets the ball away, but he did to Eric Miller. And he's got a first down, or very close to it, at the 40 or the 38 yard line. All the Louisiana Tech coaches say that they rarely have seen Kelly Bradley rattled, that you can put pressure on him, that he just stays cool and calm all day long. And so right now, Louisiana Tech defensively is trying to continually mix it up put pressure on him, take it off of him, and see if they can get a winning combination. And, and really, Bradley's been able to kind of pick and choose. It is not a first down. It's fourth down and two feet. And so the Bobcats want to talk things over with the timeout. 8.46 to go in the first half. And it's 9 to nothing. Montana State leading. There was a time we thought our granddaughter might never enjoy this. Well, I guess maybe the question would be from the Tech fans, uh, what's happened to our dogs? More turnovers in the first half, and uh, they have been befuddled by the defense, except for that one drive that wound up, of course, with a sack and then a subsequent fumble. The one encouraging feature of Louisiana Tech's offense was that they did move the ball against a very strong Montana State defense. Fourth down and two feet. Oh, and what a hit by Tank Landry. That may have just stopped Eric Miller short of the first down. I give Miller credit for going on after being hit. I mean, that one we could hear, Steve. Watch, watch Landry. He just does what a linebacker is supposed to do right in the mouth. you got to go hit him, but you've got to give, as you did, Bill, Eric Miller credit for be able to spin away from it. If Landry would have been able to wrap him up, probably startled both players that they had the impact they did, and he was able to spin off, and he might have gotten the first down. No, he didn't. Great defensive play by this All-America, Doug Tank Landry. He knew where the play was coming. He set his sights on it, and he accomplished what he had to do, and that was to stop the ball carrier short of the first down. Eight minutes, 41 seconds to go in the first half. Well, that was a cheering uh, note for A.L. Uh, Williams, the coach of Louisiana Tech. Great developer of quarterbacks. And Landry tries to get out of the pocket. Well, he did a pretty good job of getting out of the grass with Tech Socorro. But he holding his left thigh there a little bit. Eyes on it. 
Sakura has played very well in the first half. Gandy again is forced out of the pocket. Gandy's only 5'11", so he's got a little bit of problem with seeing upfield. Tries to get away, and Sakura makes the tackle. But I think, to the credit of Louisiana Tech, they are being patient. I think the weather will be a factor later in the ball game. And really, they're fortunate to only be down by nine. I think that's an excellent point to make. You know, really, if you if you think about it, they could be behind by four touchdowns if you give one for every turnover. Bobby Lights, fullback, who doesn't carry very much. Outstanding student in engineering. Carries it off for three or four yards just to mix things up. Seven minutes, 43 seconds to go. In big football games, Bill, you, the, I guess the most frustrating thing for football coaches is to try to create an attitude on the player's part. While on the field, guys, we've got to be patient. We're down nine. Don't panic on me. We've got plenty of time. And I think as a player, that's probably the hardest thing to do because I know as a quarterback, you want everything to happen quick. You don't like to be down by nine. Gerald McDaniel's pretty upset with himself on that one because he had the first down. If he'd caught the ball, he would have had it easily, and he dropped it. So Barry Bowman will record it to the lineup. Louisiana Tech has a net yards rushing of zero. But uh, lest the Louisiana Tech fans be downcast, Montana State has a minus 26. This is not a rushing game today. It is going to be killed. No, nope, it didn't. He got into the end zone. He crossed the plane, but not by much. Very, very close. So that was a good break for the Bobcats, who are leading in this ball game by the score of nine to nothing. Seven oh four to go in this first half. I mentioned earlier that there was a wager in this game between Dr. Jay Taylor the president of Louisiana Tech and Dr. William Teats, the president of Montana State. 25 pounds of Louisiana shrimp against 25 pounds of Montana prime beef. Bradley throws and it is incomplete. Harry Jackson got a hand on that, number 24. It was intended for Tom White and uh, Harry was thinking interception all the way. Just tried to stab it. The sophomore out of Orange, Texas. Jackson's really the, the quickest defensive back that Louisiana Tech has, and yet the Montana State coaches felt like that he would be the one most uh, likely to be exploited if they could, if they could put him under pressure. He played linebacker in high school, and sometimes he makes uh, decisions that are uh, incorrect. Bradley, a quick toss to the tight end, Big Mel. He's got a first down after a 12 or 13 yard pickup. This is the one thing that Bigno will just chew you up with after a long day at the office. He really will just continually, methodically catch that ball across the middle. He is a very strong athlete. He's exceptionally tough on the secondary. That hot route, that quick route right across the middle is what he'll do most of the damage on. It starts out small, but by the end of the day, he'll have 100 yards just on that kind of route. Oh, oh get back. No, nope, he didn't get back in time. Number 71 across the line too quickly, and this pass is thrown incomplete, but they're going to nail. I thought it was 71. It was McCourt, 53. Anyway, you saw the man uh, jump. No, it was Landry, 51. There's 51, Tank Landry. Whoops. He gets across and not able to get back. And that's a five-yard penalty. So it's first and five on the 38. The Bobcats leading with 6.26 to go in the first half. Scores nine to nothing. And the blitz once again is on. Completed to Jesse Jones for the first down after a seven-yard pickup, and Doyle Adams makes the stop. I don't know, if I had to sum up what we've seen so far, Steve, 
I would say that I, I don't think I've ever seen so much blitzing in one 30 minutes of football. We haven't played 30, actually. Well, you've got two fine quarterbacks that can hurt you throwing the ball, and, and the strategy of both defensive staff was to try to get both quarterbacks out of tempo, let them not feel comfortable with what they're doing. That's why you're seeing all the blitzing. Well, you hit it right on the head when you said not feel comfortable. <laughs> I guess so. Look at this. That's not fun. And that ball is caught by Tom White, who jumped right up in front of Alden Kelly and nailed I think what's phenomenal about the play is Bradley. Watch him throw off the back of his heels. Looks like he's falling down. Watch him when he throws the ball. He'll lean back. Look at that. Lean back. Not put a whole lot of... Uh, Velocity on the football, and then White is able to jump up in front of two defenders and make the catch. White was limping a little bit as Darren Dietrich, number 44, has replaced him. First down on the 39. On the draw, it's Jesse Jones who gets uh, about five. Brett Hall brings him down. You always see Washington in there, don't you? Number 73. Seems to me he's on every single play. He and Landry. Johnson. Oh, they built a fine defense of Tech this year. Five minutes to go in the first half. Nine to nothing. The Bobcats lead, and they're threatening again here with a second down and four. Bradley throws that lofter. It's a touchdown. Joe Bignall for the second time today has gotten three. And it was a perfectly thrown pass. It couldn't have been lighter than a feather. Blitz is coming inside. And the quarterback, Bradley, is just able. And Bignall gets away from everybody. The defender falls down. And Bignall is just able again. His second touchdown catch of the day just gets away, finds a way to get behind the secondary. 33 yards on that one. Mark Carter to try the extra point out of Issaquah, Washington. No question about that one. So it is now 16 to nothing. Montana State Bobcats are out in front. This is unusual for them. They usually come from behind. So with timeout, 4.54 to go. The score is 16 to nothing. Montana State in front. Takes large chunks of real estate. Dave Arnold's extremely well-conceived offense, but again, I cannot emphasize more strongly about the defense of Montana State. I think I'm more impressed with that than I am the offense. They have been so quick. Taken by Garland Powell. Takes a nice move to the 40-yard line. He was almost away there. Here's the touchdown again. Watch Bignall. Now, he does not have the great speed. He gets an outside release. He's looking for the ball quick. Now he knows he's not going to get it. He goes right by the defensive back, Doyle Adams, the, the safety. Adams just misjudges it. Let's the slow tight end get behind him and score the touchdown. I wonder if the sun had anything to do with it. Looking right into it. I think it was Bignall. <laughs> yeah. That one was tipped over the center of the line and Jennifer Lester Mills. Looks like it might have been Troy Timmer, number 71, who got a hand on it. 4.42 to go in the first half, and it's a 16 to nothing game. Montana State with 16 big ones on the scoreboard and a very big step toward the national title. Not being able to run the football for Louisiana Tech puts a lot more pressure on the quarterback, Kyle Gandy. He's now got to go throw the ball. Yeah, he's only been four out of 11. He's got that one, however, intended for Patty Doyle, number four. And he got enough for the first down. Derek Abel covering on the play. In college football, as a rule, Bill, most of the time what defenses try to do is get you in predictable situations. If you can get them down 16 to nothing like Montana State has Louisiana Tech, now you know you've got to go throw the ball and you're not going to be as timid to throw the ball, so defense can play into that, and you know they're going to throw it, so you can play defense knowing that. Gandy. Oh, the ball was right in the arms of Lester Mills, and he couldn't hold it. In his defense, however, 
Weinbarger was right in front of him and might have uh, caused his vision. A little problem. Lester Mills, the old man, 25-year-old ex-Marine corporal. The ball was thrown behind him. Had the ball been thrown correctly with not as much uh, velocity on it, he probably would have made the catch. 25 years old, went, came to Louisiana Tech, went to the Marines, then came back and finishing up his schooling and playing football at the same time. And he played a key role in the victory last week, if you recall. Caught that one, but right on his back was Joe Roberts, number 47, who made the big play last week. A 97-yard interception against Rhode Island that won the game and clinched it. As an ex-Marine, Lester Mills is probably the only guy on the field that thinks three-a-days is easy. <laughs> in combat boots. That's right. He, he could do it in combat boots. It would be easy for him. Good play. Third down and nine. Tech trailing 16 to nothing in the second quarter. Gandy. Again, Lester Mills has a little trouble with the handle, and it's Joe Roberts who's covering on the play, and it's fourth down. Harry Bowman checking into the lineup. Boy, it just seemed like on that play, not to be critical of Mills, but the ball was thrown where it had to be thrown. It just seemed like Lester uh, didn't want to go catch it. Doug Kimball is dropping back. High kick, fair catch at the 16 or 17 yard line. So the Bobcats, who are leading in this game by the score of 16 to nothing, have three minutes and 47 seconds to go in this first half. And Montana State will take over the football here. I can't say enough about the uh, hospitality of Charleston Mayor Joseph Riley, uh, Mac Holliday and his excellent Chamber of Commerce staff, General and Mrs. Grimsley of the Citadel, Vernon Strickland, the chairman of the committee that has hosted this game, Wallace Street, a host of all of the festivities at Wild Dunes, the scene of the player banquet and golf tournament. I think everybody's had just a a, a marvelous uh, three or four days here in Charleston and uh, I know the players have have enjoyed every moment of it as the coaches and the coaches wives that holding penalty on the kick has moved the ball back to the eight yard line Not everybody moving. Looks like Tom White on the snap. The wide receiver jumped and then pulled off, uh, pulled Louisiana Tech off sides. Against, uh, there you go. Tom White, number two, the wide receiver was the one that jumped. Gosh, as a former quarterback, Steve, aren't you impressed with Bradley uh, as a sophomore? I mean, he's got all the maturity of a senior, it seems, out there in the face of all the pressure. He just doesn't get rattled, Bill. Well, that one just off the fingertips of Harry Jackson, intended for Darren Dietrich. Harry Jackson, 24, who we said earlier, that Montana State really wanted to try to take advantage of. There again, Kelly Bradley keeps the poise, almost picked it off. The ball was thrown uh, beyond the receiver's grasp, but they're trying to take advantage of Harry Jackson a little bit. But boy, aren't you impressed with Bradley's poise, oh. ability to sit in there and know that they're bearing down on him, but he's just going to sit in there and throw a good ball every time. And more flags. Kelly comes from uh, not exactly what you could call a big football town, Zombrota, Minnesota. He, he had, he threw 558 passes, completed 335, 4,100 yards or 4,173 yards, 25 interceptions, 36 touchdowns. Bill, that's more statistics 
than I had in both games and practice in my entire <laughs> career at OU at Oklahoma. 36 touchdowns in one year really is, is some, as you say, more than maybe a quarterback will do in three years. Again, over the center, and a tough pass for Darren Dietrich to hang on to, considering the traffic back there, and he does a good job. you got to consider the dilemma that Louisiana Tech's defensive coaches are in. If you blitz, he's going to take advantage of you, and he's going to find the open man. He does a good job looking off the defense. If you set in there and try not to blitz, then he's going to let the running backs do some damage to you. And so he's, he's really got the best of all worlds right now. So Kelly Bradley's really doing exactly what he wants to against Louisiana Tech. But the only thing he doesn't have is any kind of field position at all. And time here is called by the Bobcats with the ball on the 13-yard line and 3.06 to go in the first half. Game coming to you from Charleston, South Carolina. These two teams have come through a division of 87 members to emerge as the two very best. And now they're battling it out right here on the field to determine the number one, and we will have a winner. There is a tiebreaker formula, which, by the way, we've seen exercise in the playoffs at least once, a triple overtime when Middle Tennessee defeated Indiana State, one of the most thrilling games we've seen in a long time. And should this be tied at the end of regulation, the overtime format would take place again today. But it's 16 to nothing. Montana State is out in front and with the ball in third and six. Oh, quick arm. Bradley gets it to Big Moon. Notice how he kept it up there, cocked. Just ready to fire, and he got the first down by a yard. This time, Louisiana Tech chose to blitz. The one thing you don't want to do, if you're going to blitz and you want to make the quarterback throw quick, well, the offensive line holds everybody out. Now, Bittnell, you see him right there, 86. He's in front of the defenders. And he just goes, and Kelly Bradley, you see him, he found the open area, threw back across where the tight end had to stretch. He threw to the open area, and his tight end, Bigel, made the catch. Oh, nothing doing there as Walter Johnson, sophomore defensive end, made the big stop on David Pant. David Pant's kind of an interesting story, number 33. He was the leading rusher on this team through 10 games until he got hurt. And this is the first action he's had. Johnson is really an outstanding football player. 4-5 speed, explosive. He just loves the game. He's a full speed player all the time. He had 180 yards in, uh, in losses during uh, this season, just tackling people behind the line of scrimmage for minus 180 80 yards. Guard the sideline to bait. Down he goes. Not much, as Bateman is tossed around by Alden Kelly. Watch Bateman. He's able to get away from the receiver, I mean, from the defender this time. Has to, you have to have a presence of where that defender is. He almost goes to turf, puts a hand down, keeps his balance, and is able to turn up field for six, seven more yards. to the sideline intended for Kelly Davis. So Bradley, with a lot of zip on that ball, or he can loft it, he can throw on the run, he can throw back, he can throw almost that catcher's snap throw if he has to throw it 10 yards. I'll tell you, he's impressive. I think what happened that time, Kelly Davis turned inside, and I think Bradley was expecting him to go outside, so that's where the ball was thrown, and that's why the incompletion. 122 to go. A low snap forces that kick, and Nelson did a good job of getting it away and away from the intended receiver, Leonard Jackson. I can see why Nelson's an All-America kicker. Twice today, he has been forced to kick that ball with a lot of pressure in his face. By the way, there's a marker down, and they may bring this back. Again, the ball was snapped into the dirt. He was. I think they're saying he might have he might have been uh, let's see what the penalty is. 
procedure against the Bobcats. Nelson, by the way, is a senior out of Derby, Kansas. Named the first team All-America and All-Academic. 355 free med student. Oh, look at that. That one almost went over his head. Partially blocked. And it will be taken by Tech at the 31-yard line. Now that's kind of interesting. 68 seconds to go in this first half. Alden Kelly was the one who blocked that. Well, the center may have a little conference with him. At first, the snap was too low, so he's playing basketball. This time, he's playing high jump. <laughs> that little mistake right there, the high snap, threw the kicker off to, to just the point of... That ball was covered by the Bobcats. Something happened on the exchange. The ball got got loose. Greg Wilkes, number 99, apparently got his hands on it and recovered it for Montana State. We'll have to see that one again because it was in heavy traffic. They didn't take a whole lot of time in the huddle either. Well, that's got to be frustrating. Turn the ball over so quickly. Well, I guess so. Two interceptions, two fumbles, one blocked kick. On the delay, Eric Miller gets a couple of yards, but that really is kind of immaterial at this point because the Bobcats were faced with the possibility of having a score against them after going, going up 16 to nothing. However, that quick... I don't know what, what actually did happen on that, Steve. Was it an exchange between the... Uh, I guess that's what it was between the center and the quarterback, and the ball was loose down there. We apparently didn't see it. It was covered. Did they even huddle? I didn't think they did. It was just total confusion. I mean, I'm talking about the punt, and they're already running the play and fumbling. Out of bounds goes Bateman. Stops the clock with 35 seconds to go in the first half. Montana State holding a rather commanding 16 to nothing lead here at halftime. Dave Arnold, the mastermind of this team. I think it was kind of interesting in the Big Sky Conference, the uh, writers, the Sky Riders, went through there, and in the 18 conference, they voted uh, Montana State to finish number nine. This is sort of a... That's how, how little they thought of this team that was one in ten a year ago. And here they are, leading 16 to nothing on the verge of winning a national title. First Maybe. down. Maybe. 16 <laughs> nothing at halftime. Well, I said on the verge. Okay. Out of bounds at the 50-yard line as Greg Powell tosses Kelly Davis out. Right. Strategy here, of course, is obvious. Just keep the ball in play and uh, not get the Bulldogs, uh, give them any opportunity to retaliate. I think the most interesting thing is what Billy Laird, the offensive coordinator, is going to suggest to A.L. Williams as the strategy for the second half because they're facing a, a quick and an agile and extremely fast-reacting defense. Hey, hey, hey. Perfectly thrown to Joe Bignall. What a combination we've seen in this first half. Kelly Bradley to Joe Bignall. All-time leading receiver for Montana State. Joining in the tradition of the great tight ends there, John McCafferty of previous years. Bignall continues to really hurt Louisiana Tech. He gets behind the linebacker, Walter Johnson, the outside in. Secondary back's got to come up quicker. Either Harry Jackson or Greg Powell has to react faster to the fact that that, line, that tight end is able to get into the secondary. Got too much cushion between he and the uh, secondary back. Mark Carter will try this field goal from 48 yards out. His long is 46. He's just set a new long for himself. 48 yards and it's good. 19 to nothing. Mark Carter, a senior out of Issaquah, Washington. 
Coming into this game, only 9 out of 21, and he nails this one perfectly from 48 yards out. Big smiles on the side of Montana State University. I think the picture will speak for itself on this long field goal. <laughs> I've always wondered, picks up the tee. I, I guess you just know you've got it nailed, so he just picks up the tee, knowing I, it's not going to change. It's going to go through the uprights, and I'm going to get three points. I've seen you do that so many times when you've hit a 260-yard drive. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> just pick up my tee and put my club back up. That's right. <laughs> Six seconds to go in the first half, and the Bobcats have a 19 to nothing lead. That's going to be a little hard to handle. Picked up by Lifford Jackson. Turns the corner and will go out of bounds. One second to go as the clock is stopped. Well, they only have one tick left and they put it on the 33-yard line. Time enough to get one long bomb away, I guess. Stay with us at halftime. We have a couple of interesting guests we'd like you to meet. One is the Louisiana Tech marching band. And Gandy drops back to throw, throws the screen to Green. And that's all. That's the end of the first half. And look at these Montana State fans. Cowboy hats and all. The uh, referee has indicated there is a penalty on this. A personal foul. So it's against the offensive team, so the first half is over. And as I mentioned, the Montana State team, 19 to nothing in the lead, gets a great ovation as the Bobcats leave the field. But don't go away and don't give up hope on the Bulldogs because they are explosive as they've proven all season long. After all, when you're 10 and... Now, let's take a look at the institution to championship team. First, in Bozeman, Montana, the campus of Montana State University. Montana State University is the state's largest educational institution. More than 11,000 students attend the land-grant university. Some say it's the attitude of the students that makes MSU something special. Others say it's the strength of the faculty. But whatever the reasons, and there are many, MSU is immensely popular. MSU offers a widely diversified curricula with bachelor's degrees in 42 fields covering 123 majors, master's in 39 fields, and doctorates in 16 fields. The research programs at MSU both support the instructional program and also contribute to the solution of important problems. The Agricultural Experiment Station, a key force in Montana agriculture, has nine locations in the state. MSU is an important resource to Montana, not only in its teaching and research programs, but outreach efforts through extension, extended studies, and the Museum of the Rockies provide valuable opportunities to all Montanans. Montana State University, working to serve you. This is Bill Fleming along with Steve Davis back at the campus of the Citadel at Johnson Haygood Stadium where the Bobcats are whooping it up a little bit because they're leading by the score of 19 to nothing. In scoring, in the first quarter at 11.59 to go after an interception by Abel, Mark Carter kicked the 33-yard field goal and MSU went out in front three to nothing. Five minutes later, they were back again as a 16-yard pass clicked from quarterback Kelly Bradley to Joe Bignall, the tight end, it was nine to nothing. Then in the second quarter, the Montana State Bobcats went 80 yards in five plays, and the scoring play there, a 33-yard toss, once again from Bradley to Bignall. And here is that touchdown pass, as Bignall caught his second one of the day. A little floater right over the arms of the defender who fell down, Doyle Adams, and it was 16 to nothing. Then. The final uh, scoring came in the closing seconds of this first half. A 48-yard field goal, the longest of his career, by Mark Carter. And it went through the uprights to make it 19 to nothing in favor of Montana State in this rather interesting first half of play. And on the 
far side of the field. If you happen to be in northern country right now and think those young ladies are cold, you're wrong. It's 75 degrees and sunny here in Charleston. Yeah. In fact, it's even a little bit too warm. I didn't realize it was that hot. <laughs> Louisiana Tech came roaring out onto the field, and I imagine A.L. Williams gave him a pretty good talking to at halftime to get back in this ballgame, trailing 19 to nothing. And can you believe this? Montana State tries an onside kick to begin this half, and they kick it out of bounds on the 31-yard line. <laughs> kind of a weird one. Very bizarre. I've got a 19 nothing lead, and they're taking that kind of chance. So they move back another five, and we'll boot it from the 35-yard line. Penalties decline. They say, well, no, we'll just take the ball right here. Thank you. So Kyle Gandy will set the team with David Green, Bobby Lights, Carl Terrebonne in the backfield, Michael Sherman the split end, Gerald McDaniel the tight end, and across the front, Roeder, Hetherington, Slemp, Shoemaker, and Watts. That uh, front line that stayed together all the halls of justice. I've heard some funny nicknames before, but this one was created by Rotor, Hetherington, Slemp, Shoemaker, and Watts, and they've stuck with it all year round. On the end around, taking the ball is Lester Mill. Got about nine. Lester Mills is a tight end. One of the things that Louisiana Tech did not do in the first half is throw to their two dependable receivers, Sherman and Bretsky. A little reverse play this time to Mills. I think that Louisiana Tech's going to have success in the second half. They've got to throw it to those two men that have really got them into the playoffs, Sherman and Bretsky. Bobby Lights, the fullback, getting the first down at the 44-yard line, and Greg Wilkes makes the stop, number 99. Last week, two receivers, Michael Sherman, number 26, and Todd Bresky, number 80. Between those two young men, they've caught 51 passes coming into today's game, and they've really not been able to get the ball to those people. Those are the two men that stretch the defense, and they've got to do something to get this uh, defense to uh, neutralize. Gandy over the center to Lester Mills, and he's got eight before he is upset by Kirk Timmer. Gandy throwing with a great deal more authority here at the beginning of that second half. Kirk Timber, number one tackler on Montana State football team, and Mike Callahan, number 45, both converge on uh, the receiver and bring down Lester Mills, number 87. Second down and about two. Louisiana Tech trailing 19 to nothing. We've just begun the third quarter. This is for the national championship in Division I AA of the NCAA tournament. And that is Gerald McDaniel, and he fumbles the ball, and it is recovered at the 14-yard line by Derek Abel, number 17 of Montana State. Oh, this has got to be frustrating for Louisiana Tech fans. McDaniel, the tight end, will catch the ball right across the middle, underneath the linebackers. Then he's able to split the seams between Simmer and Wilk, Timmer and Wilk, and go upfield, and then the ball is knocked away, and Derek Abel falls on it. Abel recovers, and it is first down for the Bobcats at the 14-yard line. That's Bateman in motion, who stops and goes back in the other direction. Hand off to Clements. Oh, there's nothing doing there. John Paul Lockie. <laughs> well, it's still about 29 minutes to play in this game, so anything could happen. But right now, things look very good for Montana State, winning a second national championship. Player down on the field is Tank Landry, and there is a man who could ill afford to be lost. So we... Uh,
have a 13-14 showing on the clock. That's the amount of time remaining in the third quarter, and the score 19 to nothing. Montana State out in front. The Michelin XA4 radial, backed by 20 million miles of testing. XA4. And with Landry on the sidelines, Atkins in place of him will team with John Paul Lockie. Second down and nine. That will be taking lots of time here, looking that defense over and throws it. It's caught by Bateman, but there's coverage there by Jean-Paul Lockheed. A gain of only a couple of yards. The problem now for Montana State, they've got the ball game in a position of uh, with 19 to nothing early in the third quarter. They need to control the football, but they don't have the running game that really supports that effort, so they're going to have to have a controlled passing attack to try to control the football in the second half, keep it away from Louisiana Tech. That ball was tipped by Tank Landry, who has gone back in the lineup, intended for Big Good job, you're not going to keep Tank Landry out of the ball game very long. He had a pit nerve, and prior to last week's game uh, against Middle Tennessee State, uh, had not played in seven quarters, so he may have a little bit more of a reaction and, and may have hurt that uh, shoulder again. Dirk Nelson. Done a great job of money for the Bobcats all season long to win All-America status. Has to scoop another one up off the ground, and they're going to call roughing the kicker against Louisiana Tech even though this ball is going to go about 40 or 45 yards it'll bring the ball back and it'll give a first down to the Bobcats Walter Johnson was the one who got in there just a little bit uh, too enthusiastic here I think that Dirk Nelson may get the most valuable player award he knows that Walter Johnson 61 is coming right at him but he goes ahead and goes through the motion of trying to get the punt off Walter Johnson used his 4 or 5 speed and just, I would say, uh, uh, destroyed Dirk Nelson. Is that fair? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> but it also destroyed the opportunity to get the football for Louisiana Tech. Here comes uh, Kelly Bradley back in the lineup. I think this is uh, one of the remarkable football players in America today as a sophomore to come in and, as Steve has mentioned, throw for over 4,000 yards and 36 touchdowns, and he's had all the poise of a seasoned veteran here today leading his team to a 19 to nothing lead here in the third quarter for the national title. It would augur well for the next couple of years for the Bobcats. Jesse Jones wiggles through a couple of yards for, before he is knocked down at the 37. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know there's anything stickier than that. <laughs> He doesn't care. Put some of that on the receiver's fingertips here. Second and five. Again, over the center. Jimmy Clements is right there, and he's got a first down. Spilled by Alden Kelly, but it's all the way up to the 46-yard line. 47 they spot us. game the coaches felt like they just wanted to keep Louisiana Tech's defense off balance and they have done that with dumping the ball across the linebackers underneath route not uh, forcing the ball at all just taking what the defense allows and they've done a good job of it. We, oh and he's got a man wide open Brent Bateman on the sideline on a cutback and he is down at the 25 yard line how Bradley can spot those guys and then get the ball to them so quickly is amazing. Well, one of the things he knows that when they're blitzing, he's got the men open. So he starts scanning the field, using his eyes. Watch his eyes rotate. He knows he's got a blitz. He finds the open receiver, Britt Bateman. And watch what he does with the football. He stops, Bill. Watch him stop. Let's the defense overrun him. Then he comes back to pick up blockers. And now he's going to go up field. Good awareness of knowing where he is on the field by Brent Bateman. Shadow Montana. First down on the 25. 
Bobcats leading here, 19 to nothing. Oh, Jesse Jones is wide open on the flat, and he gets it inside the 15-yard line before Alvin Kelly, number 35, brings him down. Again, quarterback Kelly Bradley is just able to sense the pressure. He goes, he's looking downfield. He knows he has one return, a running back that's going to be dropping off that he can drop the ball off to. He does just that. As Alden Kelly and Napoleon Farrow make the tackle. This versatile offense is really keeping the Bulldog defense at bay, and they just simply cannot solve it. They plug one hole and another one opens up. Cutting to the inside, Tom White, but the pass a little too high. Richie Sims on the coverage, number 27. Richie had a moment of glory last week, picking up a blocked kick and going in for the score for Louisiana Tech, the first touchdown of the ball game against Middle Tennessee. I tell you what, Kelly Bradley's better than time X watch. He takes a beating and keeps on ticking. He, just, he does whatever it takes the quarterback to, to run the offense. They put pressure on him, they drop back. And he's been able to make the right decision almost every time when he's on the, on the field. He's got pretty good size. He's six feet three. Good range. Over the center. He's got Bignall again. And he is down inside the 10 at about the seven yard line. I don't know what Louisiana Tech's defense got to do. They're doing all the right things. They're trying to put the pressure. They've got people all around the receiver, Begnell. He still jumps up, uses a 6'4 height, and plays basketball and catches the football. And that ball is spotted on the seven and a half yard line. Put in there, too, also today, two touchdowns. In addition to those statistics on yardage. Well, that'll bring up the fourth down. And the ball is on the seven and a half. And it would seem that Mark Carter, who has been uh, in good form today, as far as field goals are concerned, had the longest of his career, 48 yards, six seconds before the first half ended. This one should be uh, rather easy for 25. Now it went off to the left, apparently. Well, it was far enough, but it was not in the right direction, and he is a little bit upset with himself. And the score remains 19 to nothing. We have nine minutes, 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, the difficult part of that statistic, as far as Kyle Gandy is concerned, to reconcile with himself is the two interceptions. One was on a deflection. One was just a badly thrown pass, the first one. First and ten, the ball on the 20-yard line, and the defense of Montana State, which has not given up a point today, goes to work once again. Screen pass, complete to Jerry Jones. And Linebarger brings him down on the 27. Jerry Jones comes out of Hallsville, Texas. So it brings up a second down and about four. The ball placed down on the 27. Same play to David Green. He shrugs off one tackler. Montana State is in this very vulnerable position in terms of, or it's not vulnerable, they're very opportune position of being able to play deep, drop back, all four secondary back, linebackers are playing comfortable with uh, giving their receivers a lot of cushion, so they're just sitting back and waiting for Louisiana Tech to have to throw the football, which they know they're going to, so it's pretty easy right now playing defense. They can control Louisiana Tech's offense. And he has to get rid of it to David Green, and it goes right through his arm. Complete Linebarger covering on the play. 
Candy a little bit on the discouraged side right now. And he, he simply hasn't been able to pick this defense apart like he normally can do. We've seen him this year just go from sideline to sideline, then down the middle, then hit a long one. So far, he's not been able to make much of an effective offense. The one time they did get going, McDaniel fumbled the ball on the 14-yard line. That was in the early moments of this third quarter. Second and ten. Trouble. Mark Fellows, the All-America defensive end on the left side, was all over Kyle Gandy. Mark Fellows, number 68, really the most valuable player in the Big Sky Conference. He just totally demolishes the running back who was trying to block him, goes right through him, uses his 4'6 speed, 6'2", 225 senior, and just puts the pressure on the quarterback and sacks him. You know, during the season, he had 24 sacks. Say, if you have anything in double numbers in sacks, it's a remarkable achievement. Third down and 10, and uh, third down and 20, rather. It's a big one here for Gandy, who hasn't been able to go very long. That ball was tipped and intercepted. That's the 30-yard line by Cleet Linebarger. Somebody in the interior portion of the line, Timmer or Sakura, tipped that ball. Troy Timmer, number 71, if you can see him, he'll be the tackle. Right there he is. He will get an, ar an arm or hand up, and he tips the ball. Line Barger, number 27, will just be at the right place at, can you believe it, the right time, and he makes the interception. Well, there were four turnovers in the first half for Louisiana Tech. They've had a fumble and an interception in the second. That's six in all. 7.37 to go in the third quarter. Bradley tosses it out to Clements. But he's pounced on by John Paul Lackey and doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. The defense really is being put in a tough situation now, giving Montana State good field position good pursuit. Walter Johnson forces the quarterback to throw the ball. And then Alden Kelly is all over him and uh, makes the tackle. I call that number 36 instead of 35, so let's give credit to Kelly. In the second down and 12 now. And Bradley sees an opening up the middle. Gets it to the 29-yard line before Donald Washington brings in down number 73. And Landry right there, too, on every play. This defense has really been called on to do a lot of things today. Well, whenever you have six turnovers, Steve, I tell you, it puts a lot of heat on that defensive unit. Yeah, there have been two things. The turnovers have been a factor on offense, and then the other thing is that Montana State has had the better field position. Louisiana Tech's offense has really had poor field position, and that's the credit of Montana State's defense. Third and ten. That one was uh, either poorly thrown or tipped. I don't know. It looked like it was tipped by Washington. Intended for Bignall. And it brings up fourth down. And let's see if Dave Arnold is going to send Carter out there again or just kick it away. I think he's going to just punt it this time and bury the Bulldogs if they can a little bit deeper. He's going to go for it. 6.17 to go in the third quarter. They're going to go for it. Well, they try to onside kick to begin the third quarter. Why not? Johnson on the blitz, and he's got the open man. Eric Miller gets the ball down to the, what is inside the 15. See what they mark. With all the receivers to catch the ball, Miller had only caught five passes coming in the ball game. He's the fullback, and he makes the catch and takes them for the first and ten. In the playoffs, Bill, Montana State has been 100% third down conversion. During the playoffs, they converted every third down situation they had. Bradley has thrown the ball 46 times today, and we're in the third quarter, connected on 27. This one deep in the end zone, and it's too far. It's in it for Tom White. Jackson covering on the play. The 
this point, with 5.40 to go in the third quarter, and Montana State leading 19 to nothing, they have the ball on the 14-yard line. I can't imagine any defense that it would have to be more spirited than Louisiana Tech one right now, because to get behind by 26 is asking the offense to do an awful lot. It hasn't scored a point as yet. The screen passed, and it is diagnosed. Eric Miller is dumped at the line of scrimmage. Hank Landry, I believe you'll find, is the one that threw his body right into the interferers. There he is. I think you could just say Tank Landry makes the play, every play. He's just, he's always around the football. He's the best linebacker the coaches of Louisiana Tech have ever been around. He's a tremendous competitor, even when he plays, uh, when he's hurt. And, uh, he really has done a fine job in his career at Louisiana Tech. He's only a junior, he'll be back. Third and 11. And it is deflected. Harry Jackson had his hands on the ball and it went right through his fingertips. It looked like Tom White might make a spectacular reception on the deflection, but he couldn't hold it. I'll tell you what, Kelly Bradley just takes all the time in the world and the ball. <laughs> the Harry Jackson has a chance. He deflects it, then it hits Tom White right in the head. 32 yard field goal attempt. And this one is not good. No question about that. He hit the top half of the ball and it squibbed off the left side of his foot. So the score is still 19 to nothing, and we have four minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dave Arnold, an inventive, youthful coach at Montana State who has really turned that program around. And I believe you could say the same thing for A.L. Williams, their team winning only four games last year. And with 11 and 2 mark coming into this game, or not, uh, 10 and 4 coming into this game. And Bobcats 11 and 2 after 1 and 10 a year ago. So, in fact, I'm not so sure, Steve, if, if that isn't some kind of a record to go from 1 and 10 to 11 and 2 or 9 and 2 in the regular season. I don't. I agree with you, I know that the turnaround was the best in the country. Yeah. And uh, maybe in history. <laughs> you got to think so. 4.35 to go. We're in the third quarter. And Tech is trailing 19 to nothing with the football, first and 10, on the 31 yard line. Here's Gandy looking. Throws it complete to Michael Sherman. Sherman at midfield is just snagged by Rodney Holland, number 35, or he might have gotten away. On the last two plays, they finally go to two receivers that have really made the difference. Before this play, they went to Bresky, number 80, for the first and 10. Now they go to Sherman, 26. First time they've gone to these two receivers, they're the ones that stretch a defense. They can do something with the ball after they catch it. He See the movement of Michael Sherman last week? He had a great day against Middle Tennessee State. Well, first down on the 49-yard line. Four minutes to go, third quarter. 19 to nothing, Bobcats leading. And the Bulldogs are struggling. Screen to David Green. And he's snagged out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. You know, I thought Teddy Allen, the sports writer for the Monroe News Star World, had a great line on Green. I'll give it to you here in a second. Boy, he really, 5'5", for you little guys watching, he's 5'5", 187 pounds. Good size, doesn't have a lot of speed, just a winner. The coaches are really excited about him. He's a lot of fun to watch. Had an 80-yard run last week that broke the game open and put Louisiana Tech in the final. And you mentioned he's 5'5", five, five, and uh, the writer, Allen, said, yeah, they have to give him low fives after he does something good. Bresky, Mills. It's Mills, number 87, first down at the 30. Bulldogs are moving the football. They've got it on the 30-yard line, trailing 19 to nothing here in the third quarter. And they send Cleve Bailey out wide to the right. David Green, boy, he dances through that hole and breaks loose. Down inside the 20. There was some determination running. This shows 
shows the strength of little David Green. Watch him here. A great pass. He determined after he loses all of his protection, all of his blocking, there's one tackler that misses him. Tries to grab him by his jersey. He gets away. Now watch him again. Another tackler will get away from him. That's the kind of thing that makes him very special to watch. First down on the 19-yard line. 2.56 to go in the third, and the Bulldogs trying to get on the scoreboard. Good protection for Gandy. And he goes out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. A gain of five on the play. Linebacker, linebacker bringing him down. Marks it to 13 and a half. And there is uh, Dave Arnold. I think he thought that there was a clip in there on the inside, a crackback, because that's what, that what looked like the gesture he was making. One of the backs did make a rather uh, significant block on the inside. I don't know. I don't think it was a crackback, but it was certainly from Coach's angle what he's looking at probably uh, had reason to question. Second down and four. Great defensive play. Stopping it before it gets started is Mark Fellows, number 68, the senior from Shuttle, Montana. This is if you're a running back, you want to avoid this 6'2 and a half, 225 Mark Fellows. The guy finds a way to tackle you. He's a very sure tackler. Strong, pressures upfield, does all the right things. He can slam dunk a quarterback if you let him. <laughs> Third and seven on the 16-yard line. Gandy looks. Bobble and held on to at the 13-yard line by Lester Mills. Tex Sakura made the stop on him, but it's not enough for the first down. Corporal Lester Mills will catch the ball. Gandy puts pressure. When you've got a quarterback that can roll out, you stretch that defense a little bit more. Mills gets away from the defensive back. Good tackle there by who was that? Maybe. Well, I don't know. I saw the number, but it's Mark right. Harwood, maybe. I don't know. Or Ken Lang, one of the two. Well, the moment of truth now has arrived for the Bulldogs. They have fourth down and three to go. 123 to go in the third quarter, and the Bulldogs are trailing by 19. Gandy. Looks, everybody's covered, throws it, intercepted at the five. It was intended for Carl Terrebone, and it was intercepted by Greg Wilkes, number 99. Montana State did not blitz. They just played back and played past defense. Gandy had way too much time to think about it. He finally had to force it. He was trying to throw to Terrebo number 34. He forced the ball inside, and Wilkes was able to pick it off. Really, it was a poorly thrown ball, but he had to throw it. Can you believe that? Seven turnovers. A team that doesn't make too many mistakes. Tim Clements grinds it out to about the 16-yard line. Well, you just can't be high enough in your praise of the Montana State defense. Everybody was covered back for Landry, uh, to, uh, to uh, Gandy, rather, and they couldn't find, any, he couldn't find anybody to throw to. Out of desperation, really, he threw it and was intercepted. It's been a frustrating afternoon, hasn't it? Second down and five. Clements again. Well, that'll bring up a third down and about two and a half. Well, we said at the very beginning of the broadcast today that the quarterback that was able to execute his offense would really be probably the quarterback that was on the winning team, and it's been Kelly Bradley being able to do what he has done all season long rather than Gandy because he's struggled and he's made some mistakes and his team has not had good field position, so it's been frustrating, I know, for Gandy. I don't believe Tech has faced a defense as quick as the Bobcat defense has been here today. So that's the end of the third quarter. And with 15 minutes to go, the score, 19 to nothing, Montana State, 15 minutes away from the national title. And we'll be right back after these messages. Kata 49 for 302 yards. 
whereas uh, Gandy, Kyle Gandy is 16 of 28 for 178, but he has really not been able to go downfield very often. He's had to drop the ball off, go underneath, and that's really been a problem, not to be able to air the ball out and stretch Montana State's defense. Bradley really has done basically today what he's done all season. I think what you said there is a very significant comment. He has not been able to go downfield. Right. Pressured into throwing short. And here we go for the fourth and final quarter. of about three or four on the play. As I said earlier, Bill, the problem, Montana State, they've been the passing team all year. They've averaged 338 yards of passing, 113 of running, and they want to control the block, the, the ball game, and try to run the football and eat up the clock. Well, they're not very experienced at doing that with the running attack, so they're a little bit out of their environment with this 19-0 lead and trying to run the ball. They're going to throw it. Back to what they know best, and Jesse Jones is on the receiving end. He fumbled the ball out of bounds. Again, Kelly Bradley has, has just really done pretty much what he's wanted to do today. He's able this time to hit Jesse Jones' fullback, a little underneath route. They've been able to keep the linebackers, uh, Lockie and, and Landry, off balance all afternoon, and it's been a real problem for the defense of Louisiana Tech. As Jones carries for a... The Bobcats won uh, only two of their first four, and everybody said, well, that's about what we expected. And then all of a sudden, they ignited. One nine in a row. And, uh, of course, two of those in the playoffs. And it was mainly due to this man right here, Kelly Bradley, who just caught fire. And all of a sudden, uh, the team got confidence. And hey, you know what that's like. When, when, when you know what your quarterback is doing out there, it just ignites. Them. I asked the coaches last night, what's the one thing that's been the key to the turnaround of one and ten last year? And they said, that man right there, Kelly Bradley, the quarterback. Third down and two. Penalty marker thrown, and Jones can't hang on to it. Against the Bobcats. So it'll bring up fourth down if it's declined, and I'm sure it will be declined because Louisiana Tech needs the ball more than any yardage. So they send in Lifford Jackson as the deep safety man. And the All-America punter, who's had quite a workout today from his center, Dirk Nelson, senior out of Derby, Kansas. He's had him high and low. He's had two ground balls he's had to scoop up. And he still managed to get the ball away. I think he's remarkable. But this will be to him. Got it away, and it goes over the head. And look out, that may go, no, didn't go out of bounds. It goes just into the end zone. So Louisiana Tech, once again, will try to get some points on the scoreboard after a 66-yard kick. <laughs> Congratulations to the heads of the two fine military establishments here in Charleston for all of their enthusiastic support of this particular game. Colonel Paul Landers, the commander of the 437th Airlift Wing, flying those big C-141s, and Commodore Donald Primo, the commander of the Naval Base Charleston. A lot of servicemen here today to watch this game. Incomplete, intended for Michael Sherman. Rather grim A.L. Williams right now because he he knows what is facing his team with a 19 to nothing deficit against this uh, real tough Montana State defense in this fourth quarter. They've had horrible field position all afternoon. They've averaged about 23 yard line in the second half on terms of field position, their own 23. 
And then Montana State played uh, tenacious defense when uh, they had to. Get to him! Gandy, scrambling for his life, now finds an open man near the side, and it's McDaniel who falls down with the ball at the 29-yard line, just a yard short of the first down. McDaniel is the tight end. Gandy really has to do a job. He's had to squirm around and, and be rather mobile, which is not his uh, best effort because he's not a real mobile quarterback. Generally, his best when he stays in the pocket, but that time he found McDaniel. Third and one. And it looks like that's enough for Jerry Jones for the first down. The time is so important here to the Bulldogs. I have fond memories of both of these teams. I had the privilege of uh, broadcasting both of their championship games in 73. Louisiana Tech defeated Western Kentucky 34 to nothing. And then it was in 1976 when Montana State defeated Akron 24 to 13. And, uh, now it's beginning to look like Montana State's going to add another trophy in this Division One AA. In those days, it was Division Two. You remember, Steve? Uh -huh. This wasn't uh, this division wasn't created until what seventy eight. Something's a problem. Gandy has a problem getting the ball from Slimp. Mike may be trying to concentrate too much on Lonnie Burke, the nose guard. We've not said a whole lot. That's been a pretty good matchup. They've neutralized each other most of the day. But they've had a couple of exchange problems that we didn't see last week. I think that's the third one that has uh, gone awry. Oh, look at the pressure put on Andy. Tex Sikora, the junior out of Billings, Montana, who wears 91, has been in that backfield a lot this afternoon. Tex is the little guy that defensive front for Montana State. He is able to get away from the offensive lineman. He pushes again on Gandy and makes Gandy come out of the pocket. And that's been the problem. They've not been able to keep that defensive line intact and, and rather conservative. They've been able to take liberties on Kyle Gandy and force him out of the pocket. Then protection breaks down and he gets in third and 20 situations, which is not uh, the best of opportunities to have. Six sacks for Montana State today. Oh, chalk up number seven. And that was a hard, hard one. And you can almost tell it's Fellows. Gandy Fellows. Well, it, it's really falling apart now in the offensive line. That time, Sakura really handles Hetherington and just gets right through there. And there's, there again, Fellows makes the play. But it just seems like Timmer and Burt, Sakura, the front three down linemen, are really having liberties on that offensive line. And a fair catch puts the ball at the 46. And so we have 10 minutes and 39 seconds to go now, and Montana State is getting a little bit closer toward the national title with a 19 to nothing lead. Is there a cleat Linebarger fan club? First down on the 46, and the Bobcats are leading it 19 to nothing. Bradley rifles it right in the perfect spot. Brent Payton makes the eight-yard gain before he's knocked down by John Paul Lockett. Here's the versatility of Kelly Bradley. This time he's got a rocket the ball. He's got to throw a heat-seeking missile inside to Brent Bateman, and he does just that, splitting the seam. And the offensive coaches felt like the seams were not all that big, but, you know, when you've got to, you've got to rocket the ball. That's what he did. He threw one of those heat-seeking missiles, Bill. Very good foot. That was way over the head, and there's going to be a... I'll tell you, that might be offensive interference. Darren Dietrich was the intended receiver. However, he... No, it's going to be against the defense. Sometimes... You see that uh, both men, of course, have an equal chance for the ball, and it looked for a moment as if Dietrich may have pushed. They're going to call it against the Bulldogs. So that penalty of 15 will put the ball right on the 25-yard line. Tech 
Eric has been penalized 66 yards today. Montana State, but 19. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. And in the slot, Big Dell is there, and a marker is thrown once more. This by the back judge, and I've, obviously it's going to be. Well, now there it is. I said obviously uh, it's going to be an interference call, but it was against the offensive team. Let's see what happened. Offensive pass interference was a call. We may not be able to see it. There's the catch by Bignall, the tight end, who's really taken all the liberties that he's uh, wanted to take. The flag was thrown late. Did well, you I, notice how late the flag was thrown? I, that, that's a penalty I just really don't understand. I'm, in, in a way, but I'm kind of glad they threw it because that's the first thing that's really stopped Montana State today is the penalty. <laughs> They really it down. I, 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 they threw the flag so late, it was after Bignall had already caught the football, oh. so I don't know where it would have come from. And uh, Well, the second and 25. Clements wrenches forward to the 28-yard line. Alden Kelly. Made the stop. Someone jumped off sides. Looked like the Louisiana Tech. Say, if I were in the Big Sky Conference and I knew that Kelly Bradley was coming back off of a team that probably is going to win the national championship, I think that I'd have to reload my wagons or something. And that's going to be a procedure call against oh, the Bobcats. Oh, against uh, Montana State. So it is two successive penalties after I had mentioned that Montana State had only been penalized 19 yards. They've just uh, tacked another 20 on, so make that 39. One of the Montana State fans is saying, send money. They just got here yesterday. <laughs> Third and about 30. I'll tell you, look at Mike Kelly. I mean, uh, Kelly Bradley, I don't know what. Bradley's the quarterback. He's kind of battered up. He's got blood on his pants and elbow, and he takes a lot of punishment, but he's really been able to deal out a lot of misery today. Boy, look at those two. They, I say, Bill, you were not in the hotel, but those guys were crazy. Montana State fans, they truly enjoy themselves. Wait till tonight. <laughs> I think you're, you're leaving. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, that pass was almost picked off by Wendell Delaney, intended for Bignall. Well, Dirk Nelson will go in and probably wonder where this snap will be. Well, he has some good-natured exchanges between himself and the center route fellows. Well, ground ball again, and he gets it away. Oh, and it takes a backward bounce, and it's going to be dead at the seven-yard line. I think I think Nelson <laughs> deserves some sort of an award, don't you? In fact, maybe he'll be a shortstop on the baseball team next spring. Timeout on the field, 8.47 to go, and it's 19 to nothing still in favor of Montana State long way from Bozeman to cheer the team on. Bill, one of the things we've been doing, we've been blaming Rob Fellows all day for the snaps on the punt. It's actually a freshman quarterback by the name of Jeff Michael. He's a 6'5", 205 freshman from Bellevue, Washington. He's been the one that's snapping the ball, the freshman, and he's had the problems today. That's David Green. Check that, it's Garland Powell. I thought it was 22, but it's too tall for David Green. Carlin Powell rambles out to about the 25-yard line. All of six inches difference here between Powell and Green, and Powell is only 5'11". <laughs> <laughs> He's able to make the catch again underneath. Boy, I tell you, Louisiana Tech has tried a, almost everything today, and this time a great individual effort. Powell catching the ball pretty shallow in the secondary and then able to do something with it. Eighth 
minutes and 47 seconds to go. Kyle Gandy with the first and 10, trying to sprint out to the outside and going to the sideline. And he beats the defender over there, Kirk Timmer. And he gained about two. Can you run the out now? Place the ball on about the 29-yard line. Strangely enough, there hasn't been any scoring here in this second half. All 19 points scored in the first half by Montana State. Seven turnovers. That's been the nemesis of Louisiana Tech here today. And Garland Powell rambles up for the first down at the 37-yard line. I think you uh, commented earlier about the Big Sky Conference and being worried about about uh, about Bradley. The, uh, the the problem it would seem is that there are some, a, a lot of really fine defensive seniors. I mean Roberts and Wilkes and Timmer, and Fellows, the All American, and Lonnie Burt. That may be where Montana State will have to rebuild. Certainly not offensively. And look at Fellows getting in there again. That's the third sack for him today, the 27th this year. They'll lose six players off this defensive team for Montana State. Gandy does an excellent job for a moment and then gets uh, taken down. He's had to dodge bullets all day long. That time he had it to dodge for a minute and dropped eight sacks on the day. Forget about the football exactly. game. <laughs> I want <laughs> super friends. <laughs> and another sack is reported. Linebarger will be on the bottom of that one. I mean, three men were in on that. bit depressing if you're Kyle Gandy because all of a sudden you've had pressure like this all day long they have just not been able to pass protect and Montana State's done a good job of mixing up when they are blitzing they've been selective they've had the lead to protect that and uh, looky there nine sacks on Montana State well, it's almost like they're playing with 22 defensive men out there For Kyle Gandy they are <laughs> 653 to go in the fourth quarter Gandy now Trying to get away quickly, almost fell down and is pulled down from behind by Mark Fellow. Well, you know, just the intimidation of trying to get back there so quickly. Well, it's been one of those days he almost fell over his own feet. He's really had to do this all day. This is not the Kyle Gandy that has been the effective quarterback the last four ball games. He's a, the Kyle Gandy that's been effective has been the one that's been able to set in the pocket, pick his receivers, and throw. And the ball will go out of bounds very near midfield. And the Bobcats will take over with just a little bit over six minutes to play in the ball game. It's a cool Bradley over the top, incomplete. Kelly Davis may have been hurt on that play. He, uh, as you saw, he was really stretched out when he caught that ball and was hit pretty hard by Doyle Adams. Here's a good look at Mark Fellows. Yeah, right in the middle of the back. Sophomore out of Butte, Montana. And they're going to take a look at him. So we have five minutes and 19 seconds to go. And the score, 19 to nothing in favor of Montana State. While they attend to uh, Kelly Davis, the second string flanker who plays behind Brent Bateman, We'll take a look at this uh, most enthusiastic crowd from Montana State. That's something you do not see in Bozeman. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes uh, Kelly Davis off the field. He's all right. 
glad to see that. I, I think that's one of the hardest plays to make in football. That wide receiver who has to sprint and then cut across at full speed and leap for a ball. I mean, talk about being vulnerable. Yeah, it's a camp, a kamikaze camp. Bradley on the day has had been exceptional. 30 of 53 for 306 yards. Boy. And there, and about 14 more as Bignall catches the ball. He's already had two touchdown receptions. Bradley has great protection. Look at everybody fold around him and just to kind of fold a little cup. He stands right there, doesn't let anything shake him. Totally oblivious to what's going on around him, looking downfield, testing that secondary, finding his receiver, delivering a strike. Again, I can't, I can't emphasize how strong that wrist action is of his. Literally, it's a snap kind of throw. Just the way I used to throw, Bill. Oh, man, I tell you, it really is effective, and he puts so much steam on it. Quick five by Eric Miller puts the ball on the 30. That's the middle guard you looked at, Monty Burt. A couple of other uh, defenders there as this offensive team now has the ball second and four. Handoff swinging outside is David Pant. And he is nailed by Tank Landry. We've been talking about Bradley's big day. I think Bignall's had a fairly big day, too, uh, Steve. Well, he has. Ten catches for 111 yards and two touchdowns. Of course, he was, he's the guts of their offense. The coaches admit that. He's not overly attractive as an athlete in terms of skill, but he just finds a way to catch the open ball. David Penn on the receiving end of that one is once again hit by Landry. I guess uh, you heard me say earlier that Pant had been the uh, leading ball carrier until he was hurt four games ago. And uh, this is the first action he has seen. A couple of wide uh, tosses. He hasn't been able to do much on the sweep, but on that one, he registered the first positive yardage for him today. So the clock has stopped with three minutes and 12 seconds to go. And Kelly Bradley comes to the sideline once again to talk to Dave Arnold, saying, well, what are we going to do here, Coach? We've got a fourth down and two. We have a 19 to nothing lead. And these are some of the folks that uh, we'd like to thank for all their wonderful help during these playoffs, not just this game, but we'd like to uh, thank all of our NCAA production staff We've had some exciting games. The 42-41 triple overtime game, I think, was one of the best we've ever covered in these 1AA playoffs when Middle Tennessee defeated Indiana State. The game last week was a fine game between Louisiana Tech and Middle Tennessee. And I'll tell you one thing. These folks that came out of Bozeman, Montana, showed the folks back here a little something in the passing game today with Kelly Bradley going over 300 yards and a defense that has been... I would say tenacious. Carrying Montana State to what looks to be a national title. I think it's fair to say they will win the ball game. Three twelve to go and fourth and two. It'd be the greatest comeback I've ever seen in college football if Louisiana Tech they would win it. And big rush, and down goes Kelly. One of the few sacks they were able to get in on him, and it was James Blackshire, a freshman out of Shreveport, and Brent Hall, a uh, sophomore. Blackshire's a redshirt cross, a freshman. He's a walk-on player. This time he's able to get away from uh, Don Leak, number 74, the tackle, and make the play. Finally, some good things happening to uh, Louisiana Tech. Not a whole lot to smile about. He hasn't played very much. Say one thing they can smile about is that basketball team. I think they uh, broke into the uh, top 20 this week. 
They've always had a great girls team. The Lady right. Texter. To Olympia. Right. First and 10 on the 32. Yeah, just can't make it click today. That really represents kind of the story of the ball game. It's, the game, it's been so close yep. on just a little bitty thing, and yet they've not been able to, to come up with a big play. Field position. Deflections. Deflections, little things, interceptions bouncing off. Uh, just things that just haven't fall, fallen in place for Louisiana Tech. And with three minutes to go now, the ball on the 32-yard line. And Tech just trying to get that ball down the field to get on the board. Back number 10, Bob Cullison, number 61, a freshman from Westport, Washington, gets credit for that one. Defensive tackle. This has been the problem. There's only a four-man rush. It's not like they're blitzing on Kyle Gandy, the quarterback. A four-man rush, you ought to be able to hold them out of there. 32, Garland Powell. The freshman running back blocks nobody, so it's not all been Kyle Gandy's fault today. That's sack number 11. He said it was only 10 for 88 yards. Those are minus yards. Well, there's a perfectly thrown ball right in the perfect spot. Caught by Michael Sherman. It was Sherman's second catch all day long. And of course, they both had, uh, Sherman and Bresky both had such dominant roles last week the victory over Middle Tennessee State, but they've not been able to throw the ball with any consistency to them. This time, Gandy throws off balance a little bit, finds Sherman. Gandy being chased. And down he goes at the 46-yard line. The nice thing about it, you can say you're number one, and it wasn't a vote. <laughs> That's right, you won it on the field. Second down with time running out. Pass is caught by Sherman once again, and down the sidelines, he's knocked out of bounds inside the 30 by Mike Callahan. Uh, gonna spot the ball at about the 27 yard line running back in high school, exceptional speed, a Lynn Swan type receiver, fluid motion, he sticks it in overdrive right here and is able to run down the sidelines after he catches the ball and do something with it. You're going back to Bozeman happy, young man. How did he know they were gonna win? <laughs> Profit. First and 10 on the 27 yard line. 128 to play in Gandy. Gets it off to Garland Powell and he is down on the 26. I'd like to thank Arnie Scalio, our spotter today for Montana State from the Big Sky Conference, and Don Graham of Louisiana Tech. Also, Mike Davis, who did our stats in the movie. Candy. Oh, there's a beautiful catch by Todd Bresky. One of the few times they've gone to him. That's, I think, only his second catch today. Right. Oh, it's a first down on the 11. 58 seconds to go. Well, I'll tell you, numbers look a lot better than zeros. Gandy into the end zone. He's got a touchdown. A diving catch by Michael Sherman. Go for two, says Coach Williams. Gandy really gets a payoff pitch here. That's that's a reward for Gandy. He's had to scramble under pressure all day long. He's beat the pole, and he finally finds Michael Sherman, threw the ball right where it had to go. This is Kyle Gandy's throw. He needs he needs this just for uh, the comfort of knowing that he's uh, taken all the abuse today because he has been physically beaten. Absolutely. And he finally finds the Sherman in the end zone for the touchdown. So they will go home. At least with a touchdown. Well, the Louisiana Tech band that performed so admirably here at halftime at least gets a chance to blow the horn a little bit for their team. Well, you talk about overcoming adversity. At no time did Gandy ever give up 
despite 11 sacks. That's right, 11 sacks. He kept punching in there and finally carried his team in for a touchdown. And a fine catch by Michael Sherman was on the receiving end of that connection. So Gandy comes out to go for two. It's 19 to six with 48 seconds to play. Well, I, they're going to be eating some shrimp out there, I guess, in Bozeman. <laughs> 25 pounds of it. I don't know that anybody could have lost that bet. That's a pretty good deal. Either, uh, what was it, prime beef and, right. and some fruit. And it is not good. That's Tyler Winter, who came up with the football right in front of Carl Terrebonne. And it remains 19 to 6. 48 seconds to go. Yeah, you're right. It was 25 pounds of Louisiana shrimp offered by Dr. J. Taylor, the erudite president of Louisiana Tech, and uh, his counterpart at Montana State, Dr. William Teats, offered the Montana prime beef. So that Louisiana shrimp will... See, I'll tell you where that, how that's good. It's charcoal. Charcoal? Yeah. A little garlic butter. I, I wonder, just out of meanness, if you just don't send the shrimp up there alive. <laughs> well, Montana State has a very proud football heritage now with the second national championship to go with the one of 76. And they defeated the Zips of Akron 24 to 13 in Division II. This coming in Division I AA in 1984 and it will be a welcome addition to the trophy case in both. Onside kick attempted, and it's uh, caught at the 41-yard line. And so the Bobcats, coached by Dave Arnold, this man right here, starting to celebrate now. They know they've got it. Shaking hands all the way around. One of the uh, fine young assistants in college football went out to Montana State as an assistant, then was elevated to the head football coaching job when it opened up. But he, Muddy Waters, the head coach at Michigan State, said he sort of discovered Dave Arnold. He said he's one of the great football minds in the country, and he's going to be a great, great head coach someday. Well, he's carried this team to, from a 1-10 record of a year ago to the national title. And that will move the clock continuously now at the 42-yard line. Everybody down here in the yellow and blue colors ready to really do some hooting and hollering as the final 25 seconds is ticked off once again this is bill fleming along with steve davis uh, congratulating the people of charleston south carolina for hosting this championship game a memorable football game for both sides and a memorable trip to this historic city as the final five seconds tick off we salute the national champions in Division I AA from Montana State University. There's only one bank... where today the Dallas Cowboys return to the playoffs for the first time since 1985. The Cowboys, who have won five straight, are led by Emmett Smith, the NFL's leading rusher, and by Michael Irvin, the league's leading receiver. It's the first time that teammates have ever won these titles in the same season. For the Bears, running back Neil Anderson hopes to atone for what has been by his all-pro standards a lackluster season. And linebacker Mike Singletary looks to rally a defense that surrendered 52 points on Monday night. The Bears have lost three of their last five games, and the city of broad shoulders today carries the added weight of anxious Bears fans. It's Wild Card Sunday on the NFL Today. Check out the Soldier Field where Leslie Visser and Pat O'Brien are standing by to set the stage. Pat, how goes it in the Windy City? 
Well, Greg, not exactly the late Decembers that you and I remember when we were living here. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a heat wave, but I'm also not going to say it's Chicago Bear weather. Uh, temperatures in the mid to upper 30s today in this late December. Winds hardly a factor, about seven miles an hour coming the other direction from the lake. So weather today is not a factor. Greg Landry, the offensive coordinator of the Bears, said that this is about as good as you can get because no weather factor. Either team has an even chance of winning this ball game. The field is an issue, Greg. Uh, it may look green because that's uh, they have.